But I mean, I've got to give. All right, I've been tough, but I'm not Robinson Crusoe on that. I've got to say, but give Anthony Albanese credit today. He can be a funny guy, you know, in, in private. And in the end, he really doesn't like Greens. Or, for that matter, it seems now, sanctimonious teal MPs, like the most sanctimonious of them all, Monique Ryan. Critical background. Monique Ryan got elected to a Victorian seat of Kuyong, you might recall, with the money of global warming crusaders. So she should have thought twice before asking Albanese this attempted gotcha today. Uh, I understand that you attended a $5,000 a head post-budget dinner last night. Can you tell the House whether any fossil fuel industry lobbyists or other fossil fuel industry representatives were in attendance? I've stood and had the great honour of being the Australian Labor Party candidate in 10 elections. During those 10 elections as a candidate for Grainler, I have spent more, less money less money on those 10 campaigns than the member for Kuyong did in her one. <laughs> Joining me on Culture Wars is Rowan Dean, editor of The Spectator Australian, host of Outsiders on Sky News on Sundays, every Sunday, 9am. Rowan Dean, I love that. The lack of self-awareness from Ryan there is one thing. But the other is the double standards. You've got money coming from fossil fuel companies. Oh, that's terrible. Democracy in danger. Money coming from big green and renewable energy investors, carpet baggers. That's democracy enhanced. Yeah, 100 per cent, Andrew. And uh, it is uh, it is kind of galling that these days the big end of town, those signs, you know, uh, when we were all students at university or whatever, it was always all oh, these big, bad, evil capitalists. Well, the big, bad <laughs> capitalists who are having undue influence on all our politics these days are, of course, the renewables investors. That's where the big end of town is. That's where the big money is. Uh, that's where the uh, we see, uh, for example, uh, you know, environmental wreckage occurring when windmills are being put out to sea or across uh, farmland, where uh, anything to do with renewables, because it is virtuous, because it is good, because it is compassionate, these people literally get away with whatever they want. And uh, the Teals have to be really, really careful. They're bankrolled by big money uh, from the big end of town. Uh, I wouldn't be looking too closely at where a lot of that money originally came from in terms of uh, uh, fossil fuels or not fossil fuels. But what is equally, what should really disturb every Australian, every Australian small business person, every Australian mum and dad, are we seriously demonising fossil fuels to the extent that we want to throw ourselves back into caves, into some kind of Stone Age existence? Because there is no way we or our society or our way of life can survive without fossil fuels. So if they have members of parliament oh, standing Rowan, up there... Steady, green hydrogen just around the corner. Of, uh... Green hydrogen, mate. <laughs> That's right. Well, of course, uh, the, great fantasy, uh, the great fantasy product, which, again, is another massive boondoggle for the big end of town. Whether it will ever be achievable or whether it will ever actually deliver anything, I suspect not. But uh, we've seen in the in the budget, uh, Andrew. Uh, you know, I'm glad that An Anthony Albanese can point the finger at uh, at the the hypocrisy of the Teals uh, and the hypocrisy of the Greens is, is legendary. But um, let's let's be honest. This budget is pouring billions of dollars into industries that don't actually exist. Uh, it's been called a magic pudding uh, budget and those sorts of terms, but it is worse than that. It's a kind of Harry Potter fantasy, magician's witch's brew budget where we're going to conjure up uh, these extraordinary industries and great wealth and prosperity for this nation out of pure fantasy. It's, it's terrifying and it should terrify every single person who's ever held a job wants to hold a job, uh, or and by a job I don't mean a government job, one of the 36,000 jobs that they've magically conjured up again in this uh, kind of Harry Potter budget, <laughs> uh, but real jobs where you create something, you sell it, for, it has its own value because you've crafted it well. Those sorts of jobs should be terrified that we have a government uh, 
uh, that is literally running on fantasy ideas and fantasy economics. And it's not going to end well, Andrew.